Oh yeah, the brand new and long-awaited iPhone 14 series from Apple is finally here. And oh, it's awesome, but is it actually any good? Anything new? Well, you came to the right place. Welcome to TextPlay. Hello everyone, and today I will talk about one of the most anticipated product launch this year, the Apple iPhone 14 series. In this video, you learn all about these new devices, from the design, specs, cameras, and of course the price. So let's just start. Okay, let's kick it off with the basic iPhone 14 and the new iPhone 14 Plus. Yes, it's true. The mini is officially dead, and welcome to the new plus i mean i really like the mini but it wasn't selling well so i can see why it's now discontinued but from the design as you can see it's pretty much exactly the same as last year the same diagonal camera layout big notch on the front and just the whole body is the same also for the screen size the vanilla 14 will stay at 6.1 inch while the plus will be a bigger 6.7 in. Both will still be the same 1080p OLED panel that Apple used last year, which also means it's still 60Hz, but at least it's now slightly brighter. For the inside, it packs the old A15 Bionic chip, which is kinda sad, but hey, it's already plenty fast for the average users. And this is actually the 5-core GPU model found in the 13 Pro, so it's kinda still an upgrade. For the storage, all of them will have 6 gigs of RAM with 128 to 512 gigs of storage. And yeah, since the Plus is a much bigger footprint with those kind of specs and a bigger cell, the battery life for this thing should be insane like they claim. For the cameras, this is where it's a big improvement. Yeah, it's still 12 megapixel, but the main now got a larger sensor with a wider aperture which will of course help a lot in low light. Not only that, they also got a new processing system to help with low light shots called the Photonic Engine, which is pretty much a better diffusion. Bruh. For the front camera, it now supports autofocus and a wider aperture, so that's pretty cool. And for video, it got the new action mode, which will provide a much better stabilization for your video, making it look like it was shot on a gimbal. Alright, alright, let's talk about the big boys introducing the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. As you can see, for the design, it looks pretty similar once again to the old Pro, like the whole body is what you expect. However, what's different is the bigger camera bump housing some new hardware inside, and of course, the front notch is gone. Now, we got this new pill ship cutout, which they're calling the Dynamic Island, I mean, cool name, but set aside the stupid name, it's actually sick. The notch is now an island on the display, and it's 30% smaller thanks to its smaller components with some of it actually under the screen. But that's not all. Even though they could have just leave it like a dual hole punch on the front, they decided to fill the hole punch with black pixels since it's an OLED to make the new dynamic island feature. So it's actually a functional cutout and it looks so smooth. With this, you can actually use it to show your activities and kind of multitask with music, navigation, and a lot of other stock and third-party apps dock on the side of that island. Pretty cool, right? Now, for the other stuff like the screen, it's still the same 6.1 and 6.7 inch for the Pro and Pro Max, of course, with ProMotion and a much brighter display going up to 2000 nits. What? Not only that, thanks to its new support for 1Hz refresh rate, the iPhone finally gets an always on display. Yep, AOD is finally here and wow, it 
ตุกตัดลองพาร์ทอย่า here you can see the time widgets and other stuff that will be always visible at a glance for the inside it got the new A16 Bionic with a 6 core CPU that's 40% faster and 20% more efficient with a better neural engine and GPU it's also packed with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs to 1 terabyte of Storage. Now, most of the features found in the iPhone 14 are also here. But what's the most different is the camera hardware. Yep, the main camera is finally not a 12 megapixel sensor, but now 48 megapixel, which of course will bend down to 12 most of the times. You can still shoot 48 megapixel with ProRAW. Okay. Not only that, this sensor also allows for a pretty much two time optical zoom by just cropping into the big sensor, which is cool. For the ultra wide, it's a 12 megapixel with better micro capabilities, and of course, the three times telephoto is also there. Now, let's talk about a controversial change to this new iPhones. Yeah, you heard the segment right? These new iPhones will only support eSIM, which is a big bummer. Like, it's certainly one of the biggest letdown for a lot of people. All of these phones will not have a physical SIM card tray, so that means you must use an eSIM. And yeah, that's quite controversial, especially for travelers or people who swap SIMs all the time, like it's a pain in the butt. Now, of course, using eSIM might have a few benefits, okay. but not having a physical SIM also means it might be harder to switch phones, as especially to a non-eSIM one since you can just plop your old card into a new one and yeah it's just inconvenient but don't worry it's actually only for the US so other parts of the world are still fine for now but hey there are a few new features available for you Americans that might save your life like the long rumored emergency SOS feature which uses the satellite in Space to send emergency messages when you're out in the middle of nowhere with no cell signal. And yeah, this is a pretty awesome feature that hopefully you'll never have to use. But yeah, Apple said that it can take less than 15 yeah, seconds boy. to send a message. Of course, you'll have to get a clear view of the sky to do this, but thankfully, Apple has made a special UI that can guide where you should point your phone to send your emergency messages. Sadly, this won't be a free feature, but you'll get your first two years for free, available only in the US and Canada for now. The second feature is the crash detection, and yeah, this one hopefully you'll never have to use, but this is a pretty awesome feature. This will apparently use the new high dynamic range gyroscope sensor and a high G accelerometer. So if those sensors along with other factors in that you have been in a crash, it will ask you if you're okay and will call emergency services if you don't respond in a certain amount of time. Now, of course, I don't think anyone will actually go out and try this feature out, let's be real. But this is definitely a good feature if you happen to be in a bad situation. Lastly, let's talk about the price and availability. These new devices will be shipped very soon with the iPhone 14 coming on September 16 and the Plus on October 7. For the price, the base iPhone 14 will cost you around $800, but the Plus will start at at 900 but if you're interested in the pros the base iPhone 14 Pro will start at $1,000 while the Pro Max will be around $1,100 also shipping on September 16 sadly these prices are for the US so other regions will actually be a lot more expensive than this so what do you think about the new iPhone 14 series is this your next daily driver let me know in the comments. Alright, that's all the knowledge for today. I hope this video can help you understand more about the brand new iPhone 14 launch by Apple. So, this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching and hit that like button. Don't forget to come back next week for more knowledge about tech and subscribe so you won't miss it. Cool? See ya!